Për përshëndia së gjithë dhe mirë serdat në emisionin e përjavshëm diplomatikus. Në programin e sotëm do zhvilloj një intervjus me ministrin e jashëm të malit të zi, zotin Sërdjan Darmanovic, për të diskutuar në bi zhvillimet kërësore në malin e zi për situatën me shqiptarit atje, si dhe për proceset integruese. Mr. Minister, thank you for being on diplomatikus. Thank you very much for calling me. It is, unfortunately, we cannot make an interview uh, alive, but uh, what can we do? We live in the complicated time. Yes, in, in fact, I was, I was planning to come and visit you in Podgorica, but due to the COVID uh, situation, we had to cancel it. We've been trying to follow the, the situation, the political situation in uh, Montenegro. Can you explain for the, uh, for the Albanian public what is going on with these protests? It is actually, I, I will try to explain uh, in detail, but it is actually the clash between Serbian Orthodox Church and the state. Mm -hmm. uh, everything was triggered by when Montenegro uh, passed the law on, on religious freedom uh, and the rights of the religious communities. It, was, it, it is the law that replaced the very old communist or so, uh, laws from socialist time from the 1970s. And uh, uh, the, the law is very liberal by its nature. We actually followed the great tradition uh, that, uh, that all the democratic world inherited after American uh, revolution and after the American constitution, as many, church, as many believers, as many churches. And uh, the law was very, uh, very, uh, it was uh, evaluated by the Venice Commission as, as a very, very, very positive uh, one and very big step forward in Montenegrin legislation. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a law that is completely in accordance to European standards. Uh, but Serbian Orthodox Church opposed to the, to the provisions of the property and uh, instigated uh, big protests, what they, what they called, uh, what they called literals. Uh, of course, it is not religious uh, religious processions as literal should be, but it is classical political uh, political activity of the Serbian Orthodox Church. Uh, so uh, we actually start negotiating with the church. I mean, the, the government, the expert teams, legal teams, about the provisions on, on property. But uh, the, the fact is that uh, Serbian Orthodox Church hold in, in its possession. Uh, some uh, property that is cultural heritage of the, of the, of the state of Montenegro. And we, we, we provided in the law that uh, every, every sacral uh, place or churches mm -hmm. uh, that, were, that were built and raised by state money in Montenegro before 1918, I mean before Montenegro b b uh, actually was introduced uh, to, in Yugoslavia, was actually, uh, was become, actually became part of Yugoslavia, that it, it will be uh, it will be, uh, it, it will become the state property. Uh, on the other side, for those that is clearly in the in the in the uh, possession of the Serbian Orthodox Church, that's that's okay. That that is what uh, as it, as it is as it should be. Uh, and many 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 uh, churches and uh, other other properties uh, were actually. Uh, Transferred to the to the uh, to the possession of Serbian Orthodox Church to the, as a property of Serbian Orthodox Church, it seems illegally in an illegal way, and we are now trying to 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 find a way how to to put it in the in the legal framework. Uh, on the other side, the Serbian Orthodox Church is the only religious community in Montenegro that is not registered. Uh, they say we don't need registration; we are registered by God. But all the others, Catholic, uh, Muslim, and the others, are all registered. So Serbian Orthodox Church wants actually to stay out of the Montenegrin legal system, and we can, and we as a as a as a country that is NATO member and future EU member cannot accept it. Uh, so the church uh, triggered the protests about it, and got got full full support from Serbia. But uh, uh, the the protests about property issue is just one layer of the problem. Is maybe layer on the surface, mm -hmm. but in, in, the, in the very in the very deep uh, context, it is actually opposition to the Montenegrin state and opposition to Montenegrin Western orientation, uh, Montenegrin membership to NATO and future membership to EU. Uh, as you may, as you might know, Serbian Orthodox Church was the most strident opponent to Montenegrin uh, NATO membership. 
Why? Uh, Why? Because they they are actually they are someone who is very much anti-Western oriented. Uh, it is the church who uh, actually uh, in their in their expression uh, is uh, keeps very very uh, very bold anti-American attitude and anti-Western attitude and. Uh, 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 politic, poli uh, politics wise and social doctrine wise is completely oriented to the east uh, even even in the rift now in inside the orthodoxy uh, they actually connected to 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 moscow patriarchy not to istanbul patriarchy not to world patriarchy in istanbul uh, so uh, actually the, the the church is in a in a in a conflict with all the values montenegro now is is trying to uh, to join uh, uh, like nato or or EU, as, as I said, it is very, it is very, uh, I would say, deep uh, value conflict, and uh, uh, it is what we what we face now. Uh, next elections we are going to face will be actually elections of the government coalition against church and their, and, it, and its parties. So these uh, elections will be in the summer, in the, the August August thirtieth. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, the uh, Montenegrin Orthodox Church actually never recognized that Montenegrins exist exist as a as a nationality as ethnicity. Oh. Uh, they 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 have always kept the very old theory that Montenegrins are Serbs and that's it. And uh, uh, they 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 accept they accept the fact that some Montenegrins actually majority of Montenegrins relative majority of Montenegrins express themselves Montenegrins. So but I believe say, I believe this has created a lot of polarization. Yes. Of course, of course, but they say for Montenegrin hood as a, as ethnicity, it is a pro, it is a product of communist time, and that that, Mont that Montenegrin nation is created by by Marshal Tito. But it is it is actually uh, it is actually big offense to to relative majority of Montenegrin population. Uh, so it is a mix. Uh, the protests are a mix of uh, a very strident anti-West uh, sentiment. Uh, uh, Anti-Montenegrin uh, uh, orientation as a, as a, as a, as mon as, a, as mo modern Montenegro, I would say. Yes. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, Serbian Auto Church would like to see Montenegro, or again as a part of uh, of uh, pan-Serbian state, or maybe at best uh, being something like Republika Srpska today. I mean, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe even independent state, but but completely of Serbian orientation. Uh, so uh, it is why we, it is why why the conflict is uh, the political conflict, not not any any anything else, but the political conflict is so so deep now, and uh, that conflict uh, will be resolved at least partly in the next elections. How have these uh, protests uh, affected the, the relations between uh, Montenegro and uh, Serbia? Uh, Serbia actually uh, changed its behavior of being a relatively good neighbor and uh, supported uh, supported the protests with a full capacity uh -huh. uh, with uh, uh, by very strident anti-Montenegrin propaganda every day in Serbian media uh, and organizationally. Uh, so Serbia, Serbia converted from being relatively good neighbor uh, to being uh, uh, one of the actors in the region who is uh, against uh, this government of Montenegro. So you're and trying to say that uh, Belgrade is destabilizing Montenegro, yes? Uh, at this, uh, in last several months, of course, they are they are uh, they are trying to to meddle in our domestic affairs. And 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 they are doing it very bluntly uh, by every almost every day uh, propaganda, uh, hybrid warfare, uh, and uh, uh, and of course uh, favoring their their clients in the in the next elections. Uh, it is it is quite clear, and we we emphasized it many times. Uh, they 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 feel they feel relatively strong now when they when they need to to resolve the. Uh, the let's say the, the the Kosovo issue, though though Kosovo issue has been resolved many um, uh, years ago by recognizing by being recognized of many countries, Montenegro yes. included. Uh, but uh, they try to somehow 
uh, use the opportunity being one of the actors in the negotiations uh, to, 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 to pressure Montenegro in this, in this occasion. And uh, uh, I would say that uh, it, is not a it is not a policy that is uh, in favor of the good, good cooperation in the region. Uh, we, we don't interfere Serbian affairs uh, uh, at all. Mm -hmm. uh, we try as being as with the other neighbors to, to, to really to really uh, embody one uh, politics of cooperation and politics, uh, politics of, uh, of uh, prosperity of the region. Uh, we support the European drive of all of our neighbors, Serbia included very much. Now, now also Northern Macedonia and Albania. Uh, and uh, we believe that... Uh, uh, you are also ahead with the integration process. Of course, we, we, open, we, we finally opened the, all, the, all the chapters. Mm -hmm. And we, be, we believe that Serbia should not, should not do what, what it is doing now towards Montenegro. If you, if you see Serbian press every day, and, and, uh, and not only press, but also digital uh, production, uh, media production, you can see one uh, uh, very fierce and uh, inflammatory campaign uh, against, against its neighbor. I see. Uh, Mr. Minister, is there any evidence that uh, these protests are being supported by uh, Russia? Uh, I'm not the investigator, uh, but uh, some, uh, uh, some statements of the very high officials of, of, uh, of uh, Russian Federation actually make my answer to your question uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they they haven't missed the opportunity through the spokes spokeswoman of the of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to support Serbian Orthodox Church and their protests in Montenegro, to to emphasize that Montenegro is uh, trying to divide, uh, as they say, Orthodox Christianity, and uh, my colleague Minister of Foreign Affairs Sergei Lavrov went so far to. Uh, to accuse President Djukanovic that he actually betrayed Russian interests and Russia. Uh, it is quite, uh, quite interesting that some official of the other country can say that uh, some other statement betrayed uh, it's, uh, his own country, not, not the one he, uh, whose president he is. Uh, so I, don't, I would not say that uh, Russian meddling in our domestic affairs in this case is that visible and that uh, uh, decisive, like in uh, uh, like like staging the coup or trying to stage the coup in 2016? It's much more, I would say, the restraint and less visible. But uh, but as I as I just uh, as I just told you, uh, it is it is clear. And uh, sincerely speaking, Russia doesn't need to be that visible this time. Uh, Serbia, Serbia, and time to time, Republika Srpska are, are doing uh, doing that that job uh, quite enthusiastically this time. I understand, uh, Mr. Minister. Uh, a few years ago, since you mentioned the coup, uh, we witnessed uh, a Russian plan to overthrow the Montenegrin uh, government, assassinate former Prime Minister Djukanovic, and uh, block Montenegro's membership to NATO. What has happened since then in Podgorica's relations with Moscow? Uh, in many aspects, uh, things actually came, uh, uh, have been calmed down. Uh, calmed down. After, after, after we became member of NATO, what is actually, what is actually uh, very important in our, in, our, uh, in our current relations with Serbia, because uh, Serbia uh, organizing this campaign in Montenegro ha has to have in mind our membership to NATO too. Mm -hmm. But after, after we became, became member of NATO, uh, Russians, of, Russians uh, of course, accepted that fact. And, uh, uh, people, and uh, things, actually, ex things actually entered in the uh, somewhat calmer water. Uh, we, have never, we have never cut uh, diplomatic relationship uh, relations. We actually have uh, normal cooperation in the in international organization. Uh, we have uh, economic cooperation. Russian tourists are also very 
uh, one, one very important part of our, to, uh, of our uh, summer seasons every, every year. There are also uh, Russian investments in Montenegro, yes? Uh, less and less, uh, less, less and less. less. There, uh, some, some, some investments in tourism actually uh, remained, and uh, those investments proved proved pretty, uh, pretty uh, successful. But uh, many of them, or many of them, left. So uh, relations are, are much more calmer and normal. Uh, but uh, Russia has strategic interests in this region. Uh, it is. It is. I'm, when I say this Russia, revisionist Russia in the in the world ar arena, and uh, these interests uh, are very often not in the same uh, direction of the of what Montenegro wants, and uh, it is it is our Euro Atlantic orientation. Uh, in that part, uh, some time to time we have also we have uh, quarrels and. Uh, uh, I think that Russian Russian approach to the region, uh, in fact, in uh, in the essence, uh, has not been changed uh, uh, from 2016. But uh, but uh, uh, the means how they try to do it are somewhat different. I understand, uh, Mr. Minister? How are the relations of Montenegro with Albania? Has always uh, has always been and has always been very good, mm -hmm. very good. It is, I would say, uh, true example of the of the good neighborly cooperation. Uh, whatever government uh, is in place in Tirana, we have never had uh, problems. On the contrary, mm -hmm. uh, it was very it was very active and very fruitful cooperation. Only only in the term of this government in Montenegro, we had even joint session of the governments in 2018. Then we signed many agreements uh, uh, on on mutual cooperation. Uh, we are now allies in uh, in NATO, uh, and uh, in that part we have very good cooperation too. And Montenegro is a very enthusiastic support, supporter of our neighbors in their uh, European drive, as I told you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did our best to to persuade our EU partners that uh, Northern Macedonia and Albania had to open their accession talks. And we are very happy that it happened. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Minister, let us talk about the Albanians of uh, Montenegro. How important is this uh, community for uh, Montenegro and to what extent are their rights being respected? Though Montenegro was defined by its constitution as, as a civic state, what, what, what we find very important for us, uh, we we very much care about uh, national minority rights, and uh, Albanian national minority is one of the most prominent in in Montenegro in in, in today's Montenegro and has always been in in, in our history. Uh, so the uh, Montenegrin laws and constitution uh, recognizes many many mechanisms how those rights uh, uh, are are to be improved or has been or have been improved. For example, we have an institute of affirmative action in our election, that where uh, national minorities have, have almost guaranteed seats in Montenegrin parliament. They actually have to win these seats in the elections, but uh, under, very favorable, under very favorable conditions, with a, with a very low threshold. Uh, so we always have some minority representatives, uh, at least five to six in, in, every, in every parliament. Then we have uh, education in the Albanian language. We have education of educator uh, for Albanian language. Uh, also the, the, the media on, on Albanian language. And uh, on, the, on the contrary, I would say that uh, Albanian minority uh, in Montenegro and Albanian political leadership in Montenegro contributed a lot in the very important moments in Montenegro in recent history. And the independence. Uh, in, the very, in the very difficult wartime, Montenegro was not part of the war, but, but uh, was uh, in, a way, in many ways surrounded by the, by the war in the, in the region, and in the referendum uh, on, on independence. And the uh, political leadership of Albanians in Montenegro have always uh, behaved in a very moderate way. Uh, and uh, contributed to to the to the uh, relationships of harmony between uh, among Montenegrin ethnicities. Uh, uh, last year, on September first, uh, one of the 
municipalities where Albanians uh, actually consist my uh, majority, it is uh, municipality of Tuzi near Podgorica, uh, actually became a uh, full municipality in Montenegrin uh, system of local local self-government. So there are many examples of uh, of the I would say uh, pretty good positions of Albanian minority in Montenegro, but my minority rights have uh, always can be improved. So uh, hopefully we will not hear any more about uh, news in Albania, Albanians being arrested for holding the Albanian flag, yes? No, 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 it's, uh, uh, it, it, it is regulated by our laws. Uh, and uh, as far as I can see, uh, not, only, not only that flag, but many others are used in Montenegro quite freely. Well, uh, Mr. Minister, what is being done to increase uh, investments in areas where Albanians live in Montenegro and uh, to reduce unemployment so that they do not leave their uh, homeland? Sometimes we can hear from uh, Albanian representatives that, that uh, they are somehow underrepresented in the, in the policy of investments in Montenegro. But I, I really believe it is, uh, uh, it is a perception. Uh, because uh, that kind of a problem exists uh, w with the, with many investments in uh, any part of Montenegro. Very often, some people are always uh, satisfied with some investments, uh, some people are dissatisfied. I think investments really don't have uh, ethnic uh, ethnic flavor. Uh, government is uh, government plan many investment in the in the areas where Albanians live. For example, in the capital budget of Montenegro for 2020, a uh, range of projects have been planned uh, for, the, for the municipalities where Albanians live. live. For example, it is local, local road in, in the municipality of Bar, uh, the road that, is connect, that, will be, that will connect that municipality with Albanian border. Then uh, investment on the, in a ski center in uh, a mountain of Hyla in Rojai. Uh, then uh, uh, set up of, uh, 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 of the Ali Pasha in Izvori in, in, uh, in Gusin. Uh, then reconstruction of the, of the road Plav Vojno also in, in Gusin. And reconstruction of the, of the road Plav Bogicevica. So many of these, uh, of, of these uh, plans actually uh, now are uh, under some problem because of the COVID pandemic, but uh, it stays orientation of the, of the government. Then also the the the, the school in, in the in Tuzi has been planned to be built, uh, and as, as well as as uh, some gym, uh, some sport uh, sport facilities in, in gymnasium. Uh, so I would say that uh, the government and the investors uh, do what they want, what they what they can, uh, but of course uh, people always want uh, want more than uh, than than the government does. I understand. Uh, Mr. Minister, one last question. Uh, the option of uh, changing the Kosovo-Serbia border has been uh, uh, unofficially discussed for, uh, for some time. What would be Montenegro's position uh, to this idea of border swaps were really put on table, of course? As you know, Montenegro re uh, recognized Kosovo as a state. And uh, we have uh, re relations, diplomatic relations, and uh, with Serbia and Kosovo both. And uh, not once, but many times, Montenegro has always been ready to to help both countries in their in their talks, in their negotiations, uh, as someone who wants best for both of the of these neighbors. Uh, we very much uh, appreciate the uh, engagement of the EU and United States in the in the solving of these of these issues because this issue uh, is a kind of a burden on the shoulder of the whole region. Uh, the region cannot normally move forward without this issue be resolved. But Montenegro has never has never. Uh, uh, hidden uh, his its uh, its uh, approach, its uh, attitude that we are we are not happy with the idea of uh, of land swap. Uh, it does not mean that we are, we we oppose to that. We cannot oppose it. We cannot be part of the solution. 
uh, if two countries are happy with the land swap, we have to be happy too, but we need them, them to, to get some guarantees that uh, it will be just, um, just a precedent because the land swap is a very dangerous tool in the dangerous toy, I would say, in the Western Balkans. Uh, ideas of the land swap triggered, uh, triggered war in the 90s, tragedy of Yugoslavia, tragedy of the, of the, of the, of the people in, the, in this region. And uh, uh, as, you might, as you can see, ethnic nationalism uh, is, uh, go, goes along with the populism in, in our region even now. So any idea of uh, land swap, uh, if happens, if ever happens, uh, should be treated very carefully. And uh, uh, we are now encouraged with the, with the statement of the special EU envoy, uh, Mr. Lajčak, that any solution of the, between Serbia and Kosovo has to be uh, in accordance to the international law and the stability of the region. Uh, so uh, land swap probably is not the best tool for these two goals. But any 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 agreement uh, that is uh, that is actually reached in, between Belgrade and Pristina, and confirmed by the international community, of course, will be supported by Montenegro because we we are the country who wants stability of the region uh, the most. I understand. Well, uh, Mr. Minister, uh, it was a real pleasure to talk to you, and I wish you lots of success in your work. Uh, it, thank you for your call. Thank you for this interview. Uh, I wish you all the best too, and uh, both of our both of our countries to stay safe and healthy as much as it as it is possible. Hopefully. Well, she was the ruler of the Federal Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. She was the interviewer of the Federal Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina.